Van Kraken here, World of Warships Legends Alpha Tester. Well, if you felt like the world was already on fire in Legends due to a Vimar or two or four in every match, things are going to get even hotter with the introduction of her higher tier cruiser cousin, Mines, in the Origin of Wisdom campaign. But is she worth your valuable time and hard-earned doubloons? The November 2021 update brings us an interesting twist we haven't seen since last December's Massachusetts event. You'll not only have the chance to earn the flagship Tier 7 Premium Mines for the typical 6 US dollars after investing 2,500 doubloons in Admiralty backing, but you'll get the French Tier 4 Destroyer Sirocco for your efforts as well. All told, there's over 80,000 dubs in WG retail value you can pocket, including the two campaign ships and all of the other XP, commander, credits, and booster swag available. Just remember that this is a supersized six-week campaign with a typical weekly structure, and Sirocco will be available to unlock at milestone 40 of the event. Now on to our preview of the Origin of Wisdom event ships. The Tier 4 Sirocco is a Barras class destroyer that has historical value as the predecessor of later and more advanced French designs that put a premium on speed, agility, and better than average firepower. From a pro's perspective, she's a fun and versatile ship with a solid armament for hit and run tactics, especially good at taking on enemy destroyers in 1v1 engagements when she is not immediately counter-batteried by the bulk of the enemy team. Her main battery is composed of four bigger than average 130mm guns and single mounts with solid punch if not the fastest turret rotation. And her torpedo loadout consists of two triple racks that have a quick reload and decent range of 7 kilometers, but do suffer a little bit from a sluggish 57 knot stock speed. In combination with her main battery reload booster consumable and engine boost, Sirocco can use her good top speed and agility to engage deliver a sizable amount of damage with guns or torps, and then maneuver away for some high-risk, high-reward, hold-onto-your-butts fun. From a con's point of view, Sirocco has to evade fire and escape without the cover of smoke, since she lacks a smoke generator and does not have the best base detection range. And she also has the potential to be hounded by enemy carrier drivers, as her anti-aircraft capability is poor to nearly non-existent. But as a throw-in ship in the campaign, Sirocco can provide fun play and is capable of knocking out some future destroyer-oriented campaign goals, even on the back end of this Mines event, and help you earn a bit of extra silver and global XP in your daily play. We mentioned in our opening that it's hard to impossible to avoid confrontations with Vimar lately, and it's fair to ask if the introduction of Mines just adds more fuel to the proverbial Legends fire. The rapidly popular or hated Tier 6 HE Slinger, depending on whether you bought one or not, is a fusion of 25% more 150mm guns from Nuremberg and a Tier 6 York class hull. In comparison, Mines is armed with the same main battery complement carried by an Admiral Hipper class hull that comes with a heel, so she's a true cousin of Weimar sitting one tier higher. You'd be right to wonder immediately if there is the similar high level of damage output potential for mines that Weimar possesses, and that would be a resounding yes, but there are some key differences between the ships that make for a unique playstyle experience, including having to go up against powerful legendary tier ships in mines. Mines was intended to be built as a hipper class cruiser that could evade naval treaty rules by being outfitted with either light or heavy cruiser guns depending on the needs of the Kriegsmarine in World War II. She's considered to be a mid to long range specialist operating comfortably at a range of 13 to 16 kilometers from her foes in World of Warships, not unlike Weimar or recent campaign cruiser Piotr Bagration but she also can lay down withering fire on enemy destroyers at close ranges when opportunities arise to do so. From a pro's standpoint, she's labeled as versatile as well because she has relatively easy to aim guns that are both long range and rapid firing and also has a more durable hull than a typical light cruiser. Mines' main battery armament is basically the same as Weimar's with 12 150mm SKC-25 guns and she also packs four quad torpedo tubes mounted to per side that are an awesome benefit when dueling in favorable or late game close quarters engagements. 
Her solid AP and HE ammunition have excellent damage per minute potential that merit a more detailed look that we'll take in just a minute. Her turtleback armor scheme can defeat Citadel hits at short ranges when properly angled. Her capable anti-aircraft suite is on par with US Navy counterparts like Baltimore and will put up a good fight against carriers even when solo. And her consumables feature defensive AA, a catapult fighter, repair party, and the higher quality German Sonar 1 that can come in very handy when hunting and dueling destroyers and having to dodge their torpedoes. Mines does have a few cons that are impactful enough to shape her role, however. While she does have hyperclass armor and an icebreaker bow that can take a few hits from battleships, it is thinner in a few key spots that make her susceptible to overmatching from AP shells, and she will not last long when focus fired by enemy capital ships. And finally, she also has a sluggish turning circle, marginal top speed for a cruiser, and very poor concealment which can negate her relatively large hit point pool if she gets caught close to a cap circle or in an exposed position at the beginning of a match. Since the value of cruisers is definitely firepower oriented and not rooted in their durability as compared to battleships, let's drill down deeper into what makes Mines' main battery gun special. We already mentioned that these 150mm workhorses feature a high rate of fire, flat ballistics, and high damage per minute. But how do they compare to those of fearsome tier 7 light cruiser contenders Cleveland and Admiral Kutuzov? Let's take a closer look. All three ships have excellent main battery range, and Mines has a crazy theoretical maximum 540,000 armor piercing shell damage per minute that is much higher than her peers. Though we have to bear in mind that the penetration power of light cruiser shells is limited by their smaller mass and falls off over longer distances making it impossible to hit these benchmarks in actual play. But nevertheless, mines can do solid work with their AP rounds, scoring consistent salvos above the belt on broadside battleships or right in the gut of cruisers at ranges of 10 kilometers or less, or when focusing on superstructures with their thinner armor plates. The high explosive round comparison gets even more interesting for mines. Again, her high rate of fire nets her at DPM near that of Cleveland, but what is especially important to note is that her German HE rounds have a special characteristic of being able to penetrate one fourth of their diameter, or at least 37 millimeters of armor. In practical terms, this means that Mines has the benefit of getting consistently good HE damage strikes on thinner armored target areas without the need to use a commander skill like Equilibrium of Power, the many players use to increase the HE alpha strike potential of Cleveland or Kutuzov shells, but comes at the steep price of drastically cutting the chance that HE rounds have of starting fires. So effectively, Mines gets the best of both worlds by having HE shells that can reliably score solid damage hits and set fires at a fast clip, without the need of a specialized legendary commander skill that comes at the cost of running other helpful ones like Fully Packed, which significantly cuts all your consumables cooldown timers and gives you an extra sonar charge, fighter, and heal. All told, her 150mm guns are going to make Mines really fun as Weimar owners have already discovered. All right, let's sum up the final verdict and ship preview of this Origin of Wisdom campaign with another lightning round of buy it, grind it, or skip it. I'll keep saying it, these campaigns are way too expensive to buy out with cash, to the tune of about $92 US if you buy them out upon release. So only pay for the whole thing on day one if you have pockets lined with doubloons and you have a relatively big hunger for extra steel. However, you rarely get two impactful ships to grind in a single campaign event for the price of one. So it's definitely worth $6 to participate in the weekly havocs of the event. And mines is honestly worth grinding alone for $6 without a second ship being included. She's even a good choice for players who aren't cruiser mains because she's more forgiving to play than similar ships at tier 7 and can deal both big damage numbers and survive a few scrapes with battleships along the way. And lastly, she's going to be an especially worthy investment for those players that have the patience to play from the second line. But there always has to be at least one counter argument, and if you only like to brawl and live for the chance of dealing devastating strikes, 
or you just really don't enjoy cruisers or DDs at all, save your cash, sit this one out, and hold on tightly to your BB main card. But on the other side of the HE spamming coin, if you can't beat them, join them. Mines is a great option to play on the dark side, or should we just say the hot side, and enter the cruiser life fray. For the sake of balance, if you want to learn more about countering cruisers in your battleships, check out our tactical tip video linked in the corner above. Also, don't forget to come back to check out our growing library of content here on YouTube or to join us for a live stream here on YouTube or on Twitch. And if you enjoyed this video, we'd be truly grateful if you drop a like and subscribe as it really helps the channel grow. This is Van Kraken and we'll see you in the next video.